So far in our work together, I've used menus almost exclusively, but I don't want you to forget that Peachtree has centers. These are these tabs over on the left-hand side. Just to show you that everything is available there as well, let's go ahead and go to Vendors and Purchases. Here, of course, we could set up those things, Vendors and Purchases, as you'd expect. And we can see things that we've worked recently, with, like setting so up the take Vendors a look at that center as well. and even creating 1099s. All of we've the been centers a lot with simply provide kind of a workflow for us. For example, I could start with inventory items. If I give the little triangle a click, I can see that I could create a new inventory item, I could view and edit inventory items, or I could set up my defaults. I also could work with company services. The same thing, working with different services just like we did with inventory items. We have an option to set up assemblies as well as build assemblies work with purchase orders, receive inventory, and now we're ready to work with the inventory count. You're certainly welcome to do so. So don't forget so. that if you prefer the buttons, I found that if or if I makes train it a little bit easier to kind of work first, with the flow then this part's easy. Menu. If I only show them how to use a flow chart, then sometimes I have trouble finding things in menus. Now, speaking of inventory, I can speak from my own experience that in high school and part of college, when I worked in retail, there was a dreaded word, and that always was, it was time to take inventory. It usually meant everybody, no exceptions, had to come in after hours, usually over a weekend, and spend a lot of time going through and counting everything that we had. Well, hopefully you don't have to do that at least like a retail store would, if not maybe in the mall. But fortunately, the inventory will make some if of you have any for kind us. of items that you. For example, I have this inventory count button, and if I give that a click, this actually will present me with a printable form. It tells me the name of the company and the date, but then it actually creates an inventory sheet. I can print this out, have people walk around, and look at the stocking, the location, the count, and who did it. So it makes it very easy to go through your entire inventory and not miss anything, as well as keeping track of who actually did that count. I think that's a great idea. I'm going to go ahead and move to the upper left and close this out. That, of course, will be something that could take just a few minutes or just a few hours or a few days, depending on the complexity of your inventory. And that's what that is available right for your for. use. Once you get that finished, get the then you might just make window. And this actually is going to be a fairly straightforward process. You're going to use your written sheet, whether it's printed from peach tree or you do something different, doesn't matter. But you're then going to go through, and one at a time, you're going to find anything that has shrinkage, anything that's different in your physical count than you saw in your actual printed account. Now, the printed count can come from an inventory report, and we'll take a look at those in just a little bit. So let's say that I did find a difference. The difference that I found was in my herbal scrub. I can put a reference. For example, if it was a physical inventory, maybe I want to put the date of that. I could do something like PI, and then an underscore, and the date of the physical inventory. That, of course, is also built into the date that you enter the record, but sometimes the physical inventory date isn't the same as the date it was entered. So we get the information, we can apply this to a job, we can put it into accounts, all of that kind of good stuff should be already in here. What we need to do is simply say what the difference is. So kind of grayed out, we can see that the quantity on hand, according to Peachtree, is 10. If we have more or less than that, we need to account for it. So I'm going to say I want to adjust the quantity by negative 1. Then I'm going to press tab, which moves me over to the reason to adjust field. Usually you have to give some reason for the adjustment. It could be just because the count was off. Maybe in this case I found a broken bottle, so that's what I'll put in. We obviously can't sell a bottle that has been cracked or broken, so that would be the idea here. Then of course we can see down below that it's doing the math. 10 minus the one that we found broken is going to leave us a quantity of 9. This gives us the ability to adjust the inventory without doing weird things that people sometimes try to do. For example, they might try to sell it but for no sales price, and that'll try to show it as not having any income. Technically that might work, but this is the better, more appropriate way. We'll go ahead and click on Save, and then Close. 